in the old testament and even on the cross of jesus we can find a lot of blood and i've heard many people telling that christianity or the bible has a lot of blood uh, mentioned in it so in this context why does the law require the blood to be split at the altar the bible says <clears throat> there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood there is an emphasis to this shedding of blood and in the old testament when the sacrifice is given the blood of the sacrificed animal will be poured at the altar and uh, if you look at genesis chapter 9 verse 4 the first time the family of noah who came out of the ship after the floods the vegetation had been destroyed god gave meat as food and there was a commandment that god gave about eating meat god said when you want to kill this animal for food pour out that blood on the ground because blood is the repository of life actually that verse 4 says blood is life and therefore when the sacrifice is given sacrifice indicates that life is given because life for life and because of sin death came and in order to redeem this person from death another life must be given as a penalty and therefore the blood actually you know stands for the life that god had given as a gift that needs to be redeemed by the punishment death that's where the blood is emphasized there are two significant points here one is god's acceptance of the substitute to restore the believer in other words this is where we talk about the mercy and the grace of god in other words you know god's justice requires the death penalty for the person who committed sin but in his mercy he is ready to accept the substitute as the penalty for the sinner and as i already said you cannot god cannot abrogate his own justice system and therefore he provided this substitute secondly this substitutionary atonement made god's pardon and atonement possible because without something that would be given as a penalty now god cannot carry out the next step of atoning or rescuing or redeeming a person from his death condition and therefore this acceptance of the substitution secondly the substitution made it possible for god to forgive and restore the offerer you know from his sinful condition there is another important point i want to make here the reason why god had commanded the blood must be poured down on the earth as well as there is a very strict command not to eat the blood a believer whether you are in new testament or old testament you are not supposed to eat the blood there is a point here it sensitizes the offerer the seriousness of life we are talking about life sometimes too much of familiarity with the concept life that we talk about you know we don't understand the seriousness of it whenever you see blood oozes out of this animal that sensitizes you to this life that god had given because you see the life is taken out and that the life is going out of this animal and uh, you know in our own life this sensitivity must be there as we think of jesus christ you know when you talk about jesus given as a sacrifice for our sake the kind of a death that jesus died 
it was not immediately when he was convicted by the crowd and uh, pilot but rather he was beaten he was spit upon you know the crown of uh, thorns were kept on his head that was not you know something pleasant he was being hurt every part of his body and he was finally crucified and gave that life the sinless son of god for our sake and then when you come in god's presence the blood of christ through which we come into god's presence the blood of christ that we carry as we see in hebrews chapter 10 verse 20 onwards to come by faith in god's presence that should sensitize you it should get into your soul that sensitivity must get into your soul my god jesus christ a person had no sin in him but died that horrible death for my sake and so when you come into take this communion you know every time that bread and uh, the wine had been given to you and you have heard this is the body of christ and the blood of christ but then the sensitivity of what it means when you think of it reflect on it you know definitely you will not commit sin if you if only you understand this whenever you go tempted to commit a sin that will pull you back my god now he had given life for my life so that i can have life and so this is the second thing about the blood that you see in the bible that uh, sensitizes us and therefore the provision in the old testament is only a model which is temporal and would be permanently fulfilled by the messiah by the seed of the woman the new testament acknowledges jesus is that promised messiah the seed of the woman who died for us and rose from the dead as a first fruit to assure us that the life is restored for us believers not only jesus died he had a victory over death on the cross and he rose from the dead as a first fruit that we will also raise from our death 